Good morning. Let's greet each other one more time. Say good morning. Um, I want to tell you this first. Um, I told you I, I went to Cambodia uh, and then came back to Korea and then went to India and then came back to Korea. And then uh, last night I came alone. I did not uh, come with my wife. My, my wife is still in Korea. A um, bunch of women got together. <laughs> so as soon as I left, I think, uh, I think the Easter from Hong Kong and uh, the missionary wife in, in Taiwan and, uh, and where else? Uh, oh, and Juna from, from Beijing. They all came and merged into one place after I left, so a bunch of women in Korea. Anyways, um, so I went to uh, Cambodia and I went to India. Um, both countries are not really, um, I don't know, uh, not like America. Okay, I think I can say that at least. Um, in, in India, um, they raise pig in the street. Uh, I don't know why. Um, I, I meant to ask them, um, but I, I didn't have enough courage to ask them, why do you raise pigs? They don't eat pigs uh, most of the time. Most of the Indians, more than half of them are, are vegetarian, and they don't eat uh, meat. Um, you know, none of them probably. I, I mean, vast majority of the uh, population do not eat cows. Uh, some people eat Pigs, but I don't think they are uh, eating dead pigs because their pig in the street is very thin, um, like very scrawny. Because, um, because you know, average temperature in India in the summertime is 45 degrees, uh, so it's like a desert. I mean, it's really hot. And anyway, so um, you know, I, I, I finished my, my uh, lecture in, in, in India, and I was coming home, and this is what I experienced for the first time. Um, I mean, I've been to India several times, but this time it happened, because this time I flew Asiana, and Asiana flies from, from Seoul to India uh, around, I think around 7 o'clock in the evening, so it's about 8-hour flight, so uh, the we land around one o'clock in the morning, okay? And I really feel sorry for the airplanes because uh, as soon as it lands, um, you know, it, it takes about hour and a half to clean up the inside and they, you know, take off. So their uh, flight from, from India to Korea was at 2.30 in the morning. I guess the flight that we brought in and then it leaves after cleaning up the inside. Uh, so, you know, if it leaves at 2.30 in the morning, what time do you, you know, what time should I go to the airport? Around 10.30 at night, right? So I went out uh, to get, the, get inside of the car. I, I went out of the building at 10.30 at night. And this is what I experienced. Um, there was this noise. Uh, you know when, when you scratch your fingernail uh, to the black, you know, the, um, and, and you times about 20 people doing that at the same time. And that kind of noise that I heard. And I'm thinking, what is this? I mean, it's, it's just hair-raising noise. It's very uncomfortable and, and very um, yucky. Anyway, anyways, it was really bad sound. Uh, it's, it's like ghost, ghost kind of, about 10 ghosts coming out and, and screaming. So I asked them, what is this sound? And this is what they told me. Um, you know, uh, pigs have piglets. Yeah? So pig is about this big, and they have about 15 to 16 piglets. Okay? And their piglet is about this big, and they just follow their mom. Um, well, at nighttime, uh, because they have wild dogs. You know, they, don't, they have a bunch of dogs on the street, too. I mean, their dogs are about but this big, and you know, and uh, guess what happened at nighttime? Dogs will attack the piglets to eat them, you know, to kill and eat. And uh, about 20 of the dogs will, will attack like a bunch of piglets. 
And then imagine if you are the pig mother, uh, you know, so there are a bunch of, you know, pig parents fighting against the dogs to protect the piglets. And I mean, dogs will growl and bark and, and, and all of the pigs have this, I don't know how to describe their screaming because they're trying to protect and it just raise your hair. I mean, it just, it's really bad sound. So as I got in the car and, and, and that sound just rang in my hair, head, just ringing and ringing. And then um, I arrived in Korea and I, 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 uh, I spent the night and I don't know if you know, uh, one of our uh, KM member is really sick. Uh, she was recently transferred from from hospital in in America back to Korea, and uh, I visited her, and uh, she was really sick, and I I, I visited her and and oh, she was she was really sick and uncomfortable and I think that as a patient uh, the worst thing is that. You don't know what's going on. I mean, I guess she knew she knew that that something is wrong inside. I mean, a vague idea, but she doesn't know why is this happening and how come it hurts and why it hurts there and why it's swelling here. So I, I kind of explained to her, you know, in detail, and you know, this is what's going on. And as I was praying with her, uh, I could see um, the screaming. Uh, oh, it's not a, an, an audible voice, but it is. A, it is. A, I think it is a, a screaming of the soul, um, I, like you know, inner screaming, and nothing much different. The audible voice that I heard in India, that the fighting between the the animals. One is trying to eat some something, and and the other one is trying to protect. Uh, same, same screaming. And I was thinking, uh, you know, life is really difficult. Life everywhere, um, you know, Cambodia, India, Korea, America, it's all difficult. Uh, maybe, maybe physical condition is different, but every, every single person is, in, is having a, a difficult time. And not all the time that we are in difficult a situation, but it's it's. I think to me, it's like this. You know, I, I, it's if I if I can remember my own life, it's okay for a certain period of time, and then boom, it hits. You go, oh, what? The? You know, and you try to solve that problem and try to get out of the, you know, that trouble, and somehow uh, you you overcome that problem, and then you go on and you know go on for a few weeks, few months, and then again, boom, something else happened. And it's just constant, you know, repeating of this, this bad experience. And gradually, uh, our soul starts screaming inside, you know, this is not good. You know, I, want, I want a better life. I want a better life. And as I got on the airplane to come to America, uh, I was sitting in the airplane and I, I was praying. I don't know, if I would call that a praying, uh, maybe a praying and thinking or meditation or sleeping, um, all mixed up. And I was thinking maybe, is there any way that, that a person can have a, a better life, better life? I have a news for you. Uh, just because we become a Christian doesn't mean our life would become e any easier, you know? Um, Tell the honest truth. I used to think, I used to think, if I become a pastor, if I serve the Lord, maybe I don't get sick, and maybe God would just take me while I'm sleeping. You know, that, that was kind of my uh, unspoken prayer to God. Since I, since I become a Christian, since I become a pastor, since I gave my life to God, maybe, maybe God would make me old and, I don't know, at the age of... Um, 80, um, no, about 100. <laughs> Maybe I'd go to sleep and in the, in the morning I'd be dead. But you know, uh, that's usually uh, a fair chance. I, I'm, I can predict 
just about all of us, you and me included, will one day become very sick and under in a severe pain and will gradually die off, every single one of us. It is now, because of the advance of medicine, uh, people don't let you die easy. You know, we, we, we go through so much pain and, and anguish before we pass away. And I was thinking, maybe I become a, a pastor that God will take me. I, I don't think so. Now, uh, I am fully convinced. Uh, and just because we become a Christian, uh, our life doesn't become any easier. You know, the, the storms and, and the illness, the pain and accident, all that. Just like anybody else, inside of the church, outside of church, it's about the same. So I'm thinking, what happened to the life that God promised us? I don't know if you remember in John 10.10, 10, uh, Jesus promised us that if you believe me, I will give you a life that is full, right? Let me, let me read you. Chapter 10, verse 10 of John. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Okay? So I'm thinking, what happened to that life that is full? You know, Jesus said, if you come to me, I'll give you a life that is full. So today, I want to talk to you about that life that God had promised us somewhere Somehow, if we be, become a, a Christian, that our life would be full. How can we get it? Where is it? You know, um, how can I achieve that? Despite of all the things that is happening in our life. So let's read our scripture today. It is in Romans chapter 7, verses 4 through 6. Okay? Romans chapter 7. Verses 4 through 6. I have to warn you, this is a very difficult verse, very difficult to understand uh, verse. So let's pay uh, close attention and see if we can decipher that. So chapter 7, verses 4 through 6. You also died to the law through the body of Christ, that you might belong to another, to him who was raised from the dead, in order that we might bear fruit to God. For when we were controlled by the sinful nature, the sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our bodies, so that we bore fruit for death. But now, by dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law, so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit and not in the old way of the written code. Amen. Amen. Do you understand that? I'm sure some of you understood or not. Maybe not. I couldn't understand that. Uh, it, it's like written in English, but what is it <laughs> saying? So let's read it one more time, very slowly and carefully. So my brothers, okay, that's understandable, which means you and me, right? So my brothers, you also die to the law through the body of Christ. Now that's when you say, ah, uh -huh? okay, or in, in Korean, meh, okay. You also died to the law, I never died, died to the law through the body of Christ. Hmm. That's very difficult. That you might belong to another, that I might belong to another. To him, that's the another, to him who was raised from the dead. Aha, I know him. Who's that? Jesus, right? So, so that I can belong to Jesus. Okay? in order that we might, we might bear fruit to God. Mm, that's difficult. In order that we might bear fruit to God. Okay, what kind of fruit? I don't know. Verse 5. For when we were controlled by the sinful nature, the sinful passion aroused by the law. I don't know if there was a sinful passion aroused by law in me were at work in our bodies so that we bore fruit to death. Have you ever bore fruit to death? It's very difficult to understand. But now by dying to what once bound us, okay, so we have to die to something that used to bind us. 
That's very difficult to understand too. We have been released from the law so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit. What is new way of the Spirit? That's difficult. And not in the old way of the written code. So let's read one more time. As if we, it will help if we read many times. So my brothers, you also died to the law through the body of Christ, that you might belong to another, to him who was, really, really, who was raised from the dead, in order that we might bear fruit to God. For when we were controlled by the sinful nature, the sinful passion aroused by the law were at work in our bodies so that we bore fruit for death. But now by dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit, and not in the old way of the written code. Oy, oy, oy. So... Um, I need help. So I went back to the previous verses. Maybe it'll help us. Okay? So Romans chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. Okay? 1 to 3. Let me read it for you. Okay? Um, this is the uh, verses right before because it was very difficult to understand that section of the Bible. Romans chapter 7, verse 1. Do you not know, brothers? Okay? For I am speaking to men who know the law. That the law has authority over a man only as long as he lives. Hmm. Okay. Verse 2. For example. Okay, give me an example. For example, by law, a married woman is bound to her husband as long as he is lived or he is alive. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. In other words, if, if a a woman is married to a man, and while he's living, they are married, right? And then, as long as he dies, you know, she's free from that, from that marriage. Verse 3. So then, if she marries another man while her husband is still alive, in other words, while, while they are married together, she is called an adulteress. Okay? I understand. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law and is not an adulteress. In other words, if her husband dies and then marries to another man, then she's no longer an adulteress, right? So that's understandable. Even though she marries another man. Hmm. So in order to understand this very difficult verse, let me, let me give you an example. Okay? Um, those of you who are married, raise your hand. Okay, good. Those of you who think I, I found a good spouse, raise your hand. Better raise your hand right now. <laughs> um, so let's say a lady, a woman, uh, found a man, okay? Uh, found a bad man. Um, you know, marriage is really uh, interesting. Um, it, you cannot undo marriage. You know that, right? Uh, I mean, boyfriend, girlfriend, your know, fiancé or unfiancé. I mean, it's, it's, it's rather easy to undo that, right? But once you get married, it's very difficult. You know, even, even if you've been married to a week or so and you want to undo that, it's not very easy, right? So let's imagine a, a, a lady found a, a man and, and happened to found a, a very bad man, okay? So as soon as uh, they got married, this man became a, a bad person. Uh, every morning he goes to work. Uh, he goes. He gives uh, his wife a homework. Okay, things to do today. Twenty things. Number one, what would that be? Number one, huh? Clean the house. Okay, clean the house. Number one. Number two, hmm? cook. What kind of cook? Okay, you have to cook nice meal for your husband when he comes back, right? Number three. Huh? Number three. Okay, these, these are all, you know, kind of good things, right? I mean, good thing to clean, right? Good things to cook. Number three, you have to do the laundry. Laundry, okay? You have to do the laundry, you know, underwear, upperwear, you know, whatever wear. <laughs> you do the laundry, okay? The laundry. Number four. 
Oh, oh, you have to cook for your in-laws. Okay, oh, okay. Your mother-in-law, father-in-law, and then brother-in-law and sister-in-law. Okay, you have to cook for them. Number, f- number five. Number five. What'd that be? Huh? Come on. Wash the dishes. Wash the dishes, um, you know, all of them by hand. Okay, don't use the machine because, you know, waste, wasteful. Okay, wash the dishes. Okay, what else? Number five. Ah, iron t-shirts, iron t-shirts, iron the jacket, suits, I don't know, you know, raincoats, okay, iron the raincoats, yes, that's it, yeah, rain, oh, iron your socks, mm. number six, number seven, huh, polish your shoes, <laughs> yes, polish your shoes, not only, not only the shoes of the husbands, but the shoes for your In-laws, in-laws, okay? Your, your father-in-law, mother-in-law, you know, whatever in-laws, okay? You polish, your, polish their shoes. What else? Number, number eight. Feed the dog. Feed the dog, yes. Feed the dog. Feed the, not, only the, not only your dog. <laughs> your in-laws dog. <laughs> your in-laws. In-laws are the problem, okay? In-laws dog. Number eight. Number nine. Car wash. Car wash. Yes, car wash. You have to do the car wash, okay? Not only car wash. Wax it. Wax it, wax it, yeah, wax it. And fill, 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 the, fill the tank, huh? Number 10. Grocery shopping, yes, grocery shopping. Then imagine all these things, and then he goes to work, okay? And nighttime when he go, comes home, and he finds out that you didn't do it. Then this little thing throw a fit, okay? And, you know? You didn't do anything during the daytime, you know. I work like a dog and, and, you know, I mean, he goes through, you know, mad fit, okay. So, it's a bad husband. I mean, what would you do if you married to this kind of man? Uh, Kill him, yes. Uh. (laughs) So, you know, when when he goes to work, guess what? You know, the the wife, during the daytime, she goes through the list and, and she does it. You know, she cleans the house. While she's cleaning the house, she's cursing. I mean, the yellow, you know, fume comes out of her mouth, you know. And then while she's cooking, you know, you say, eat this and die. I mean, she's cooking. And she's doing the laundry, you know. You know, I didn't know that, but. Men, listen to me. Some of your women wishes you dead. <laughs> I heard that many times now. I mean, oh, I, oh, I think I heard more than 10, 20 times. <laughs> you know, they silently wishes, you know, die, you know. I mean, I mean, cleaning itself is not bad, you know. Cooking itself is not bad. But she just, just hates it. I mean, hates with passion. So she, and then, guess what? God heard that prayer. I mean, usually he doesn't, hurt, he, he doesn't hear many of our prayers. He heard that prayer. And one day, while he was coming home, he got into a big car accident and died. Okay? And then a couple years later, she married another man. And this man is a good man. <laughs> Every morning she, he goes to work. Guess what he says to his wife? Honey, you don't have to do anything. Okay? You just stay home. Just relax. You know? Don't do anything. Okay? I'll just come right back. I'll just, I'll just come right back. I mean, just stay home. He's a good man. Not like ours, okay? a good man. So when he goes to work, guess what she does? She's happy. She's really happy. You know, she's loved. She's taken care of. She, you know, she's really happy. So she's kind of bored, you know. So she start cleaning, okay? She start cleaning, you know, cleaning. And once cleaning is done, guess what? 
I want to cook, cook, cook for a husband, you know, he, he's almost here, so I'm, I want to cook for it, and, you know, for his, his laundry, I do the laundry, and she does dishes, and, you know, one day, she just went all out, you know, she was just really good mood, so she's just, clean. maybe today I'm going to do the spring cleaning, so she just took out everything and started cleaning, and, and she was cleaning the attic, and then something happened. You know, while she was cleaning, something fell off. And she went, what the heck is this? And she lifted, and she almost passed out. Guess what? She picked it up. This is the list that her previous husband gave her 10 years ago. I mean, as soon as she picked it up and looked at it, the yellow fumes start coming out. You know, what the, you know? You know, all this, oh, I hated him. I hated him. And then she noticed something. Guess what? All the list that was in the paper, she was, she was doing that. She was not cursing. She was not wishing her husband dead. She was really happy. Number one, cleaning, cooking, doing laundry. You know, I mean, she's doing more. That's what usually happens, right? That's what verse 6 and 7 is saying. Let's read it one more time. So my brothers, you also die to the law through the body of Christ, that you might belong to another, to him who was raised from the dead, in order that we might bear fruit to God. In other words, when Jesus died on the cross and raised in three days, and when we believe him, guess what? We marry to Jesus. Before that time, guess whom we were married to? Repeat after me. Satan. Okay? Come on. Be brave. Okay? We used to be married to? Satan. Satan. We were children of Satan. And Satan gives all the things, you know. We have to go to work, you know. We have to do, well, take care of the children. And we have to uh, take them to here and there. And we have to take this medicine and that medicine. And by itself, it's not evil. You know, by itself, we have to go to work. Yeah? We need money, right? We have to cook. Yeah? We have to eat. We have to do the laundry. I have to wear a clean clothes. But all that was our chores. And our life was very miserable. Very miserable. Because once in a while, you know, bad things happen. And we start cursing. We start cursing. And we wonder, how come my life is, is so miserable? Well, guess what? We were married to Satan. That's what he's saying. So my brothers... You also die to the law through the body of Christ. In other words, when Jesus died on the cross and raised, to the, raised in, in, in three days, we married to Jesus. That you might belong to another, to him who was raised from the dead, in order that we might bear fruit to God. Amen. Now I understand. Because our life itself is not really evil. There are a lot of things we have to do. Unfortunately, the things that the daily lives that, that's going on in our lives will become very difficult at times. And in fact, sometimes very painful. Very painful. Sometimes we'll get sick. And sometimes we'll have difficult times. And I'm thinking, what does this mean? Well, because Apostle Paul must have found a better life. Remember, she, he was, he, before he, he met Jesus on the way to the Damascus, he had a life that was very difficult. You know, he was persecuting people and killing people. And I don't think he was very happy doing that, but he had to do that. He had to do that because it was the law. You know, he had to do that. And then on the way to the Damascus, he met Jesus. And then his life changed. And then he fully devoted his life to Christ. Now, after he became a Christian, I don't think his life physically become better. Okay? 
I mean, those of us who, who read the Bible a few times, we know what kind of difficulties that Apostle Paul had. In fact, he confessed himself. He had a shipwreck. You know, he was beaten. He was beaten to death. You know, sometimes people thought he was dead. So he you know, <laughs> threw away. I mean, that's a difficult life. Huh? Sometimes he was whipped. Sometimes he was jailed. I mean, life itself, for him, did not physically improve. Okay? In fact, maybe it became physically even more difficult. But he always confessed, even though my body is getting old, just like me. You know what happened, by the way? Oh, no, I hated uh, the stewardess. I have to say this. I was uh, Asian stewardess. <laughs> I was coming out of the restroom. And maybe I, I stumbled. Maybe because, I don't know. I was dizzy and I stumbled. And then she came to me and said, um, I don't know how to say in, in English. Uh, he, he, she called me Abonim. He called, he called father, you know. <laughs> I, in Korean, which means, you know, elderly uh, dear, you know. It's kind of the, I mean, and I looked at her, I'm not your father, okay? <laughs> I don't know why she called me father. I'm not your father. <laughs> and then I sat down and I, I kind of thought about it. And, and the student was younger than Jamie. So I guess, <laughs> <laughs> I, guess I am getting old. Um, life is difficult. <laughs> life is very difficult. In fact, just because we became a Christian doesn't mean our life would be better. Okay? I, I believe what Apostle Paul is saying is this. I mean, I understand the law, you know, the written law, the mosaic law. Okay? We don't have to worry about mosaic law anymore. Okay? I mean, you know, nobody care about, you know, eating, you know, split hoof and not split hoof. It doesn't matter to, to us now. But what this law is, what does that mean that we are married to? Married to Satan. It's that before we met Jesus, we had to do so many things, so many things. By itself, isolated, it's not bad, just like the law, you know, by itself. It's not. But we were bondaged to it, that we have to do it, that we must do it. So while we're doing it, you know, we curse, and then sometimes bad things happen. But now when we become a Christian. Now when we believe in Jesus who died on the cross and, and resurrected, once I married to him, the, the good marriage, the feeling has changed. The attitude has changed. Now my marriage to Jesus is bound by what? Bound by law? Mm -mm. Bound by his love. That is unending love. And also, my dedication and my love toward him. Amen? I told you my wife did not come with me last night. So I took a shower last night, and I slept on my bed. Very nice. <sighs> it's been two weeks. Okay, so I lay, I lay down, and then I put my hand over to my wife's side. Was not there. I mean, she was not there. The head was missing. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, you know, if I <laughs> go. <laughs> so I, uh, so I said something in my heart. I said, honey, have a good day. And I fell asleep. And I think, think that's the life that is for. Amen? I don't think my life is any better or any easier nowadays. But then, now I'm married to Jesus. And my focus, my dedication, my bonding is now with Jesus. And everything else is secondary. But I found out something. Once I put everything else secondary and, you know, married to Jesus with love, guess what? 
everything else now is now a little bit easier. Whatever I do, I'm okay. I'm okay, really. You know, taking a shower with three split laser beam, <laughs> it's okay. It takes me a while to wet my hair, you know. <laughs> and then I have to put shampoo. Oh, it takes out longer. Uh, it, I, I don't say, oh, what the, you know, come on, come here. I don't do that. I, t I take a shower, you know. And when, when I go to, I went to Cambodia. Uh, you know, I don't know if you know in Cambodia in 19, I think 1970s, they had a, a very severe uh, episode. Uh, Khmer Rouge came into power and they just killed bunch of people, I mean, a whole bunch of people, like three million or so, I don't know. And the whole country just, just broke. I mean, they just completely broke. There is no, there, there's a big gap in the population, the, the, the intelligent, uh, you know, the population just completely, utterly decimated. So because of that, they're very poor, very poor. And, and I, 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 I saw their lives, and I felt very sad. But then, then I hear the news coming from America, you know, coming from all our mission field. Even though, you know, physical life is improved, our emotional life is not much better. Not much better. And I, I really want to think this morning, you and I, how can we live our life better? How can we bear fruit to God? I believe bear fruit. What would God like the most? You know, if, if, I, if I bring some kind of fruit to Jesus, to God, which one would he really love? I know I have, I have children. You know, I have my, my children. And imagine, Jonathan is doing really good to me. Jamie is really doing good to me. And then they don't see each other. You know, they fight. They can eat together on the same table. I don't think I'd enjoy that fruit very much. Even if the love toward me is just a little less, maybe because they are busy. And then they are so close to each other. I think I would like that fruit better. Wouldn't you think? Is that natural? I think fruit to God. Yes, we can witness. We can do missions and all that. But I really believe as, as a parent, God who bore us, all of us, that the best fruit, best harvest that we can give it to him is that we love each other. Amen? I truly believe that God would enjoy that more than anything that we can give him. I mean, I can do, you know, mission work. I can, you know, donate whatever, you know. I think God would be happy, but I think God would be the most happy when I love my neighbor, you know, husband loving the wife, wife loving the husband. Instead of the, instead of obligation, that as a Christian, I should live like this. I should live like that. But if I love God and all other things, you know, falling into it. Sometimes I wonder, you know, in Old Testament, there are many written codes, like laws and, you know, do this and do that. And I wonder why God gave that. You know, you... You wash this, and you know, there, are, there are very complicated laws, written laws, you know, we call mosaic laws. The reason why God gave that law is not just do it, you know, not just do it. By itself, it's good, but if you do it with the heart, that would be better. That's why God gave us the law, you know, do this with your heart. But Pharisees changed it. You just... Do it, you know, even though you don't have a heart, you just do it. Same thing as giving the list, you know, you cook it and you do that. And, and we ended up having a miserable life by doing that. I think Apostle Paul did that too. And then he found the secret. 
when Jesus showed up to him in the way to the Damascus. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus that you are persecuting. At that moment, I think Apostle Paul fell in love with Jesus. Said, okay, you know, Satan died now. I want to marry you. And from then on, every, everything that he did was according to love of Jesus. So I want to I ask all of you and me this morning, we must have faith that should produce action. And you might wonder, what kind of faith? Faith that God loves us. The faith that I love God. And if I love him, then everything else will start falling in places one by one. Yes, it will be difficult, but we will have strength. Amen? Every time I get on the airplane, I always wonder, you know, especially the, the route from Korea to uh, America is uh, um, Airbus 380 or 350 or whatever. It's a double-decker. Uh, I, I call it a fat boy. Right? <laughs> I mean, it's really f you know, big. I'm going, huge. And then all the luggages that we put in, I mean, it's like endless. You know, you just, just you put it. And then it flies. I really feel bad for the airplane, though. You know? I mean, you sit on the airplane, it, it's revving. I mean, almost like 90%. You know? <laughs> I mean, for 13 hours. Outside temperature, minus 50 degrees. Imagine you are running full steam, okay? Outside degree, <laughs> minus 50. I really feel bad for airplane. <laughs> and then it lands. As soon as land, you know, we get off, right? And then people go inside and clean it. It takes about hour, hour and a half. And then they fuel it, guess what? Turn right back, take off another 13 hours. It lands, take another hour and a half. I mean, it's just doing it all day long. I mean, so many times. Anyways, I always wonder, how can that airplane going to fly? Just a little engine on the side, you know, and it's flying. Guess why it's flying? It's because it's wings. You, we all know that, right? I mean, you don't have to be a scientist. You know, because of the wing, it flies. And I think there's a secret of life. Sometimes our life is really heavy and burdened. I mean, it's really difficult, really painful, really sad. But if we have wings, doesn't mean that life is going to be easier, but we are going to be able to fly through it. Amen? And that wing is Jesus that I got married into, that my heart belongs to him. Now I love him. Now I, my life belongs to him. Now my main concern is Jesus. Yes, I have to do everything else, but my main concern is Jesus. And then whatever the pain, whatever the difficulties that faces me becomes manageable. And that's the secret. And I think Apostle Paul really found that secret. And I want to I wanna invite all of you, really, let's get married to him. Amen? Really married to him. Not as an obligation, you know, not a contract, but married to him in love. And I want to fall in love with him. That I do whatever because I love him. And also, he will do whatever because he loves me. And I believe that's what Apostle Paul is saying. That my life with Satan has died on that cross. And now, my life is new, which is married to Jesus Christ. And I am, or the church, is the bride of Jesus. So turn to each other and say, congratulations, and say, be a good wife. Okay? <laughs> Let's pray.
Lord Jesus, thank you so much for waiting and waiting for a sinful person like me. That I used to belong to Satan. No wonder my life was miserable. Filled with hatred and disappointment. And then I found you. The Jesus who, who died on the cross for my sin, for my wrongs. And I am married to you now, Lord. And I want to fall in love with you. And whatever I do, I want to do it because I love you. And whatever happens, I will take it. Knowing that you always love me. Now my life will be full. Doesn't mean it's easier. Doesn't mean bad things won't happen. But because I love you, that I can go through it. That I'll fly through it. Because you are my wing. Lord, we are about to give you our offering. May given unto you. May your blessing be upon every single one of us, Lord. Yes, we do need it. But most of all, we do need your blessing in our lives and in our soul. Thank you so much, Lord. Pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.